So first of all, uh, many of you uh, will be very familiar with uh, record linkage and, and what it is. So this is just uh, a very quick introduction to the kind of terms that I will be uh, using. Um, the simple situation, you have two, two data files, um, you have the same individuals in each file. Um, one I'm going to call the file of interest and the other the linking data file. Um, and I want to bring some information from the linking data file, which might be an administrative data set, into, for example, a data set compiled from uh, a survey, uh, my file of interest. Um, and I'm going to be talking about this simple case, but it can be extended to cases where you have several files to be linked, uh, and some of the files uh, have uh, individuals that are not in other files, and, and so on. Um, so the basic situation uh, is that you don't actually want to link the records in the different files. What you want to do is to bring some of the variables from one file into another file. So the file of interest is your basic file, and you want to collect up variables for those individuals that only appear uh, in other data files. So though this is the term record linkage, seems to imply actually what you want to do is to link records. That's actually a means to an end. It's not the end. And that's actually rather important because it somewhat changes the focus um, in terms of the work that we've been doing from the traditional focus, which is really linking records, producing a single extended record, uh, linking together records from different files. Actually, from a statistical point of view, it's the variables that we want to bring into our, our basic primary file. Um, and the first, uh, to do that, we need a set of matching variables. So in each file, we're going to assume we've got some variables that are common, like date of birth, name, national health service number, uh, and so on. And these are the matching variables uh, that we're going to use uh, to decide which records go together, which are the records for the same uh, people. So the basic procedure is what's often referred to as deterministic matching, um, and it relies on a unique and error-free combination of matching variables, matching variable values, having a one-to-one -one relationship between the two files. So the same date of birth, the same name, um, the same postcode, or the same NHS number, and so on. And typically, when you do matching, you'll find that uh, hopefully a large percentage of your records satisfy uh, this condition. So over a number of matching variables, you're pretty sure you've got uh, the right individuals put together. Um, but of course, in practice, uh, there will always, nearly always, be somewhere there's some equivocation. Uh, maybe errors have been introduced into the NHS number or date of birth. Uh, and so though you think uh, approximately, it looks like the right match, there may be several candidate records in the linking data file uh, that could be the right match for the particular record you're currently looking at in, in your file of interest. And probabilistic record matching has been developed, goes back about 50 years, uh, attempting to deal with this situation and to decide um, when you can actually assume that a, variable, a record that doesn't match completely on all, the record, on all the matching variables actually is likely to be the right one. Now, these, you know, I've used the term likely to be and so on, uh, and of course that implies that uh, even if you can do this, you're still going to be carrying some error across. And that's why it's called probabilistic. Okay? So you're matching but you're matching uh, probabilistically. Over and above the deterministic matches, there's some probabilities associated with some of the other uh, matches. Um, and one of the problems about this, well, this is, there's a big literature on this, um, and some very kind of sophisticated techniques have been produced for deciding how to do this. Um, but what doesn't tend to happen is that the information about this, these probabilities that are associated with the matching process is not carried through 
to the statistical analysis stage. So people carry out statistical analyses as if all the values and all the records have been perfectly matched. So what they're ignoring is what you might think of as measurement error, that some of these records actually aren't the right ones. And of course that's important, and I'll come back to that later. <clears throat> OK, so the perspective on this, I want to go back now and think about this whole thing in rather a different way, and I'm going to try and persuade you that actually this is just a case, a special case, of missing data. I've just given a talk about missing data um, in another session. Um, so here we are. Here's, um, this is our, what I call extended file of interest. Um, now the set A variable, so there's four records here, four individuals, um, they're the ones in the linking data file. We don't have those. We hope to kind of bring them in. Our file of interest has are the set B variables which we know, but of course the zeros, which represent missing data, might be there as well in a file of interest. So this is, uh, if you like, a rather special case of missing data, where for the set A variables everything is missing initially. Um, and this is what we want to fix up. Okay? We want to change the zeros to the x's. Okay, that's the problem. Right. Um, now, Uh, I'll come back to sort of MI, which stands for multiple imputation, uh, in a minute. Um, now, the first thing we do, um, we think of doing, is a deterministic matching process. So here's a situation where, for the last three records, we've actually got a match. Everything matches, we're really sure that we've matched the right individuals, so we can bring across their data. So we've got some x's. We also have, a, we can have some missing values there as well. Okay. So now we're in a much better situation, and this is a missing data pattern that actually we can apply standard imputation procedures to imputation, multiple imputation, is the modern way of handling missing data. And I don't want to repeat the talk I gave an hour ago. Um, you just have to take it for granted that if we had this situation, um, we could now go ahead and do our statistical analysis. We can go ahead, uh, impute the values, um, and use standard techniques um, to get where we wanted to do. And actually, I could now stop and go home because this might be, and in many situations, would be where you stop. That's it. You don't need to do anything fancy. Um, and if you've been able to match, let's say, 95%, 96% um, deterministically, and you're sure about that, that's probably all you want to do. And now, just a little bit of missing data around, fix that up by imputation. It's pretty efficient. Um, you don't need to do anything else. You don't need to use very complex software, sophisticated stuff, um, to do the probabilistic record linkage. However, um, there's some caveats. Um, first of all, and, and this is probably the biggest one of all, but it's often one that's brushed under the carpet. Typically, if um, you try and match, um, and you match some of them but not the others, the ones you don't match are not unmatched randomly. In other words, the probability that errors in the matching process occur, that probability is a function of the characteristics of the individuals or the values of the variables. So we know, for example, and there's increasing research that suggests, uh, for example, if you're using name as a matching variable, people with difficult to spell or write names, um, so for example, immigrant groups, minority ethnic groups, uh, those are the ones where errors are more likely to occur in the transcription of names. So when you're matching two files, the names will differ. And so they, they're the ones that don't get matched. So if you're relying on deterministic matching, the ones you do happen to match are not a random subset of the population. And in fact, it's been shown in certain circumstances that you can then do, uh, then do your analysis on those data. You can reverse your inferences. Um, 
and, and that's quite serious. It can lead to serious biases. Um, so what I've just said about stopping there is fine, but only if everything all over the place could be assumed to be random. This kind of failure to match is a random process, but actually it almost never is. Um, and there's other data that, that's um, been done by my colleagues, Gareth here and, and Ruth, um, Katie at UCL uh, on some health data that shows that uh, this is rather important, that the missingness is, um, and inability to match is not a random process. So typically we can't usually stop there um, and we've got to do something else. So very quickly, and I know I may be running out of time, um, this just explains, and I'll go through it very quickly and summarise it, um, what probabilistic matching does. Essentially, what it does is, if you sort of go down to about line six, um, there's something called G, which is a pattern um, of uh, matching values. So what I'm assuming here is I've got three variables in which I'm matching. For example, date of birth, name, National Health Service number. Um, and if I've got 111, is the case where everything matches perfectly um, across the two files, and that's deterministic. Um, so, but I might have a pattern which is 101 where date of birth doesn't match. So I've got a, a residual set of unmatched records in my file of interest, and I'm searching this other file, um, and I can't find a perfect match, but I can find something like 101, or 110, or 011, or 001. And for each of those possible patterns, I want to assign a weight or a probability, if you like, associated with this that's related to the probability that it's the correct match. So what I'd really like to finish up with um, is for all, as it were, candidate matches, imperfect matches that might exist, I want a, a, attached to each one a weight or a probability that this is the right one. Okay, assuming the right one exists and ignoring the fact that, in fact, there may not be actually the right matching variable there, but assuming there is, um, that's what I want. And that's what essentially probabilistic uh, record linkage is all about. It's actually computing that. And that's not a straightforward process. Uh, it's people have uh, introduced fancy algorithms, EM algorithms, MCMC algorithms, and so on, all of which have assumptions um, to try and compute that given the data you do observe. Um, and one of the, um, well, two issues with this. One is um, that, again, there's a sort of assumption of randomness uh, creeping in here. But also, um, the, each of these probabilities is estimated separately for each of the matching variables, whereas actually what you want is the joint probability for each pattern. And that turns out to be rather difficult to compute. So it's assumed that the, um, these, these probabilities are independent across the variables, but in fact they're not. So the probability of an error occurring in the name is independent of the probability of an error occurring in the date of birth or in the NHS number. Uh, now, if that assumption is satisfied, these work probably well, but in practice, again, that's a very strong assumption and probably is not satisfied. And that's a sort of drawback to um, most of these methods. Anyway, that's probabilistic uh, record matching. Um, and uh, here's some uh, problems with it. Um, typically what's done is that you take these probabilities or weights, you set a threshold which is rather high, a threshold designed to minimize the probability of a false positive. In other words, a match that you make that actually is the wrong match. Um, so anything that's above the threshold you accept as the correct, uh, as a true match. Uh, but again, there's still some error associated with that, and that is what I referred to earlier, typically not taking into account later. So that paper is, if you want to read up about it, that's a kind of classic uh, paper. Um, and we, as I said, re refer to the fact that um, most of this is concerned with carrying across records. I want to emphasize that actually what we want to carry across is just the data values we want, which is a subset of that information. So 
the work that, that we've been doing, um, which we're quite excited about, is, is essentially extending the existing literature on probabilistic uh, matching. And what we do is we start from these probabilities um, that if we can calculate them, we've got other ideas about how to calculate these. Um, so for each of the unmatched, following the deterministic stage, record in a file of interest, we have a set of candidate records, different matching patterns. Um, and let's assume we can assign a probability to each one that it's the uh, correct match. Um, and the idea here is that um, we treat those probabilities within a Bayesian framework as a set of priors. So these are kind of priors attached to data values or combinations of data values. We, we treat the whole thing as a multivariate data set. Um, and then we combine that. This is where it gets a bit technical. We combine that with a likelihood that we compute from an imputation model. Now, so now I'm going right back to slide number three, which where I said, look, this is just a missing data problem. Missing data problem, we do something called multiple imputation. And at the imputation stage, we set up a model which allows us to impute randomly a variable. And associated with that imputation model, there is a likelihood. And that is then combined with this prior, which is these sets of prior probabilities which we've computed uh, from our matching variables, some assumptions going in there, we combine those to form posterior probability, which we then can treat um, either one, one or two ways. Um, we can decide on a threshold, perhaps a very high threshold, um, and accept if the posterior is above that threshold as if it was uh, a true match but still remembering the Samara attached to that. Or um, we can um, decide that, well, that, that, that's the kind of standard way uh, uh, of doing it. Or if nothing exceeds that threshold, then of course, we're just back with the missing data problem. We've just got a hole in the data. So the recommendation is that this is combining these probabilities with the likelihoods arising from the imputation process, because the imputation process is using all the information from the deterministic linkage stage. So there's quite a lot of imputation there, hopefully. We're doing rather better than the standard probabilistic algorithms, which just use the weights themselves on a threshold set on those. So we can do rather better, and some simulation work that we've done suggests we do do quite a lot of better in terms of efficiency and, and bias, um, that we can do that um, or simply fall back if we, our high threshold is not exceeded on just treating it as an imputation problem uh, where we go through a standard multiple imputation procedure. And that's the third bullet point um, from the end. And the other nice thing about this, which uh, doesn't exist in the, in, in the kind of existing probabilistic methods, is that in multiple imputation, you can condition on auxiliary variables where if you've got auxiliary variables that you think are associated with the propensity to not match, or propensity to match, this issue I was talking about before, you can condition on those in the imputation model um, so that this is a way, another way of getting at the non-random matching. So if you think that going back to the example I gave, uh, that ethnic group is associated with inability to match, then condition on ethnic group in the imputation model and hopefully, conditionally, you'll satisfy the assumptions uh, of randomness. So it gives you some extra, this approach gives you some extra tools uh, for handling this. Um, so that's essentially what um, we have been working on and um, uh, attempting to implement uh, in software. Um, so this is something I've already uh, talked about. Um, we, um, yeah, I, I, I've uh, talked about all of that. We've shown with some, or at least in some simulation cases, uh, that um, this actually does do rather better than existing methods in terms of 
eliminating um, bias. Um, and it's also an attempt to improve efficiency um, by using as much of the data uh, as possible. Because typically before, if nothing exceeded the threshold, or if you were just using deterministic linkage, which unfortunately many agencies out there still seem to do, um, you can be very inefficient um, because you're only taking a subset of the data, apart from the fact that maybe will be a biased subset and, and you don't kind of do anything uh, about that. Um, so it depends what your priorities are, the elimination of bias or increasing uh, efficiency. Okay, a little bit about software. Um, multiple imputation is now standard uh, procedure. It's available various places. We're um, developing in some new SAT, a software called SATJR um, at Bristol, uh, which is looking at ways of improving existing multiple imputation methods, making them faster, and incorporating this record linkage stuff into that so the user uh, will have a sort of rather simple interface and all the hard work of imputation linking and so on will go on uh, behind the scenes. Um, and currently it will handle mixtures of normal and binary variables and we hope to extend that to general categorical variables uh, in the future. <coughs> um, and some of the current work uh, we're doing is looking <coughs> at the methods for estimating these match probabilities. And this is work um, that I've already referred to uh, that's going on in conjunction with the Health and Social Care Information Centre, which some of you may have heard of, association with the chaos that surrounded, a few months ago surrounded the care.data situation. I won't go into that, but it's an absolute disaster for record linkage work generally uh, in this country. Um, and so we're working with them, trying to kind of improve things uh, as well. And the paper that describes the methodology I've been talking about was published um, a couple of years ago in Stats in Medicine, if any, any of you uh, want, want to look that up. Um, so as I say, the, the current work is using what we think, hope is gold standard data, um, in order to try and see if we can estimate these matching probabilities directly and rather more accurately um, than has been possible using kind of internal data methods um, that's been used previously. So that, that's, that's our current work and maybe on time there. <laughs>